Well, once again, a very warm welcome to our daily service. The Bible says God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So as we consciously come into his presence for these few minutes, let's begin by saying together this prayer for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to say together now some words from Psalm 89. In their original context, they speak of King David. But they point beyond David to great David's greater son, the Lord Jesus Christ. My faithful love will be with him, and through my name his horn will be exalted. I will set his hand over the sea, his right hand over the rivers. He will call out to me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Saviour, and I will appoint him to be my firstborn, the most exalted of the kings of the earth. I will maintain my love to him for ever, and my covenant with him will never fail. I will establish his line for ever, his throne as long as the heavens endure. We're going to begin our time of prayer by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And now two prayers for these anxious times. Heavenly Father, our ever-present help in trouble, our fortress and our God. Calm the anxious fears of all who turn to you. Give strength and healing to those who are sick and courage and skill to those who care for them. Grant wisdom and clarity to those in authority and humble us all to call upon you that we may be saved not only in this life but also for that which is to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, the healer of nations and judge of all, give us grace to humble ourselves under your mighty hand throughout this time of anxiety and discomfort. In your anger, remember mercy, not giving to us all we deserve for our many sins, but strengthening us to repent and recover from all we must endure. For we ask in the name of our precious Saviour, Jesus Christ, who bore our sicknesses and carried our sorrows, that we might experience new life in the Spirit. Amen. During this week, we're going to be looking at one of the most lofty descriptions of the whole of the New Testament about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's from Paul's letter to the Colossians, and we're going to begin by reading today Colossians 1, 15 and 16. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. I was talking to an older friend who is not a Christian about my Christian faith a number of years ago. And once I described what I believed, he said, oh, you'll move on. I asked him what he meant. He said, oh, as we get older, we broaden. You'll move on from that focus on Jesus and you'll be open to other ideas. Well, Paul is writing in this letter to the Colossians to some Christians in what is now modern day Turkey. And he was pleading with them not to move on. They'd begun well in the Christian life. 
But now some new teachers were saying, it's all very well to believe in Jesus, that's marvellous, but to become very spiritual, you need a new knowledge. You need new experiences. You need to follow some new practices. It's not all about Jesus. There's something more. And Paul writes to them, urging them not to move on. And nowhere more so does he do that than in this magnificent description of the glory of the Lord Jesus. Once we realise who he is, it should be unthinkable to move on from him. There is no one and nothing beyond him. We're just going to look at the first verse, Colossians 1.15 today. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Two great truths there. For a start, he's the image of the invisible God. Human beings are made in the image of God. To some extent, at least, we reflect his glory. But Paul is saying the Lord Jesus Christ is the very image of God. Noel Coward, the entertainer from the last century, was asked once what he thought about God. He replied wittily, oh, we've never been properly introduced. It may be you feel that God is rather distant. You're not sure how to find him, where to look. And the Apostle Paul is saying, look no further than Jesus Christ. Because through Jesus, God the Father, the living God, is introduced. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. That's a favourite verse of Jehovah's Witnesses. And they use it to say, look, you Christians claim that Jesus is divine, but of course he's not divine. He's just a created being, the firstborn. But that's to fail to notice the context. As we'll see tomorrow, the next verse makes it very clear that Jesus isn't part of creation. He's the great creator of everything. This word firstborn can mean the first child. But because the firstborn became the leader of the next generation, it came to be used, this word firstborn, of the leader, the ruler. It's in that sense that that word appears in Psalm 89, the psalm that we read a little bit earlier. Do you remember those words from Psalm 89? God said, I will appoint him to be my firstborn, the most exalted of the kings of the earth. And that's what Paul means when he uses this title to refer to the Lord Jesus. He's the great king of kings and lord of lords, the firstborn over all creation, the ruler of everything. And of course he made his lordship very clear as he walked on earth and showed his authority over everyone and everything. He just said the word and blind people could see, the lame could walk, even the dead were raised. And then he conquered death itself. He rose, he's ascended, seats at the right hand of God, the position of supreme authority in the universe. And one day he will return and every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Once we realise that, it should be unthinkable to move on from him. Now, Christian maturity is found not in looking somewhere else, but going ever deeper in our knowledge and love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me pray. Loving Father, open our eyes to the wonder of the Lord Jesus as your perfect image, the great firstborn ruler over everything. Help us to delight in him, to submit to him, and to grow in knowledge and love of him. For your name's sake. Amen. Our song written by Liv, Alana, and Philip is inspired by these words from Colossians. It may be new to some, so feel free just to listen, but if you know the tune, do join in.
Well, let's stick close to Jesus. There is no one and nothing beyond him. And now, as you go into this coming week, may you be conscious of the presence of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And may his blessing go with you. Amen. <laughs>